Yo, I'm Saxon with Guy in the Cube. Another week, another roundup. We've got some updates for Power BI. We've got some contest winners and we've just got some good resources for you. If you're finding us for the first time, be sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with all the videos from both Patrick and myself. And with that, let's dig in. Eugene Meidinger's got a blog post looking at just a guide to Power BI performance tuning. This is a post that goes through a lot of stuff. So there's a lot of aspects when it comes to performance tuning. It could be from the model level. It could be from a visual layer. There's a, just a lot of stuff that you need to know. I like this blog post because it just pulls together a lot of great resources. So he touches on a lot of different areas and in each area, he's gonna give you a resource that you can go to learn more about it. So this is just really good. If you're just getting started with performance tuning, you're not quite quite sure where to go or what to do, this is a great starting point to get you on the right path. In some cases, he's pointing to the official Microsoft documentation. In other cases, he's pointing out to just resources out there in the community. So it's nice that he can just pull it all together and allow you to just read it and learn some stuff. The other thing I like is he's linking to the new guidance documentation that's out in the Power BI docs, which is awesome. So if you haven't looked at the guidance documentation, go check it out. There will be more documents hitting that area. Mike Carlo from Power BI Tips has got a blog post looking at grouping with style. I'll be honest, that title grabbed me. I was like, oh, I think I know what he's gonna talk about. Looked at the blog post and yep, it was what I thought, but it was really good. So the idea here is taking advantage of the new grouping feature inside of Power BI Desktop and then looking at grouping items that are similar together and adding backgrounds to separate. And he points off to some resources just from a design principle perspective. So it's good reading and good understanding if you wanna get more in depth into actual visual concepts and layouts and things of that nature, which is definitely an area I wanna learn more about. So if you're not familiar with grouping or you're not familiar with maybe some of those design principles, this is a great blog post to read. Also, a lot of people have been pinging me about the grouping capability. They're saying that they can't, like it doesn't show up when they actually group. This may have to do with the type of visual that you're actually using. So check out the documentation, make sure everything's lining up and make sure that you're updated to at least the August version of Power BI Desktop. Links down below along with links for everything in this week's roundup, including some bonus items. So go check it out. The Power BI team hosted a back to school contest. The idea here was that you would create a report that had some educational value associated with it and then share it out. It would be judged and winners would be announced. And we got our winners. First place went to David Eldersveld who created a periodic table of elements inside of Power BI where it could be interactive and you could learn about those elements. Hopefully those folks going to high school will pick this up and maybe it'll help you in chemistry class, who knows? The second place winner was Learning to Stay Healthy by Paul and Martin Consulting. And the idea here is that you can just learn to stay healthy. There's a great use of what if scenarios inside of this report, along with backgrounds and colors and just ways that you can just explore being healthy. So again, great from a high school perspective, this will get you started on the right foot. The third place winner was all about electricity usage and cost. And this was created by Duke Nguyen. Sorry if I'm pronouncing your last name incorrectly, but this is a great report that looks at actual energy consumption and cost and just being able to explore that and understanding it better in terms of what you're using. Congratulations to all the winners and thank you for everyone that participated in that contest. Template apps got an update and the update is that you can now update them. So if you are using template apps, what you can do now is if you go back to app source and get that app, installed, it'll give you an option to either add that to a new workspace or overwrite an existing app. And what's awesome about that is if you already have credentials hooked up for given data sources, it will retain that information. So you're not gonna have to reset it all up again. You can also use sample data with those template apps and the service will let you know with an indicator that you're using sample data. This blog post also calls out that based on requests that samples would be made available for template apps. So you can check out the documentation for links to that. There's also a call out and a reminder that the old organizational content packs were deprecated and will be going away. By the end of September, almost everything will be converted over to template apps. And so those organizational content packs are kind of a thing of the past. 
If you were working with organizational content packs and you're not familiar with template apps, definitely check out the documentation to find out how you can get that converted over so that you're not gonna experience any interruption in your business. Again, links for these blog posts are down in the description below. Power BI Report Server got the September 2019 release, so be sure to download and upgrade to the latest version. This includes both the server product as well as Power BI Desktop. There is a separate Power BI Desktop specifically for Power BI Report Server, so make sure you update that to go along with the server update itself. And so this means that everything is trued up to September 2019 for Power BI Desktop, so that includes the new facelift, so it's the new look and feel of Power BI Desktop, it includes grouping of visuals, the new default themes. So all the great features that have come out since the last Power BI report server release now includes all of those updates for Power BI desktop. That means you can go and update your Power BI reports and have a little more fun with them to bring all those new features to bear. Again, links down below. Make sure you update both the server and Power BI Desktop for Power BI Report Server. All right, I want to pass this off to you. What was your favorite item this last week? Maybe it was something I mentioned. Maybe it was something I didn't. I want to know. Let me know down in the comments below. If you like this video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up. Smash it if you so desire. If it's your first time here, hit that subscribe button. And as always, from both Patrick and myself, thank you so much for watching. Keep being awesome, and we'll see you in the next video.